Okay, quiet down, quiet down, quiet down. Is everybody here for the rehearsal? <laughs> Looks like a full house. Well, it's time for the talk. And you know what I'm talking about if you've been in my past plays. It's time, the oops, time to really get our stuff together. I've even written down some notes so that I won't have to forget anything. Okay. <laughs> It's three weeks until opening night. Three weeks. Some of you out there still don't have all your lines memorized. <laughs> Those of you working on the sets, I noticed a lot of unfinished stuff. The dancers still don't have all their costumes. And two of the leads have bad colds right now. Phew. Huh. OK, 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 settle down. OK. Remember that day when we first all gathered around like a family in a circle on this empty stage and read the script from beginning to end? Every one of you was committed to doing the best job you could to make this a wonderful play, whatever position you held. When that first meeting was over and you guys left, I stood alone on the empty stage and envisioned opening night. I saw the backdrops, the dancers, the actors heard the music, gloried in the final curtain call with the standing ovations and everyone beaming. Talk about wow. So that is just what I need you guys to do now. Make the dream come true you had when you signed up for this. I had to do just that when I first came to Whidbey Island in 1974 driving an old red Econoline wagon that I eventually traded for a chainsaw. <laughs> and I think they got the best of it. Uh, I was with my three sons, Eric, 15, Chris, 14, Michael, 10, our cat, Gallagher, and a dog named Puddin'. Kind of weird looking, but really sweet. I moved my family into what was essentially an empty stage, a clearing in the woods. We had no water. No electricity, no house, nothing but our dream. So we slept in tents on the ground the night before school started. The principal thought me crazy when I told him why I had to use the school shower the next morning. Thank God I had boys. <laughs> ah. A few days later, we bought our first prop, a 50s Grand Mansion Silver Airstream trailer complete with a doorbell and oak interior. <laughs> and the show began on a stage that took me nearly 30 years to complete. Unexpected events made me leave my job that fall, but I decided to jump into the community in some way. So I became Langley's first firewoman, complete with a regulation jacket and hat and pants. I learned to climb the ladders and drive the truck. Unfortunately, because I lived so far out in the woods. By the time I reached an actual fire, all that was left for me to do was roll up the hoses. <laughs> what became more lasting was joining the wonderful Fools Theater Group as part of the Carolina Parents. Then a job came up at the Langley Junior Senior High School in 1976. I wanted, I so needed that job. I was willing to do anything. Question number one, can you teach English? Ah, oh, that was easy. I had actually gotten a teaching degree. Question number two, can you teach girls basketball? Whoa, but sure. Um, luckily, the girls had played for years. So, so they taught me the rules and the exercises. I bought the costume, um, a bright blue and white coach's outfit with a whistle. Uh, started chewing gum, and of course, yelling at the ref. And by the end of the season, we had ended up winning most of our games. Yeah. Fortunately, I only had to do that one year. But the real beginning of my drama life came with saying yes to question number three. Can you put on a musical for us this year? That's when I took on a lifelong role as Jeannie Appleseed, planting the groundwork for decades of wonderful talent shows and plays, 
so that those who were the real geniuses, the conductors of fun, the directors, the teachers, the designers, the builders, the costumers, they had the fertile ground to grow these gardens. Now, you kids, you are the farmers that have to grow this year's garden. So, two things I learned from my parents have always helped me bring an idea to reality. My father was one of four founders of a unique high school in the 1920s. And he taught me the same kind of courage. Just jump in there. Just do it. He put me, age three, on his back and dove into the school pond after I had just said, wow, swimming looks like fun. I think I'd like to learn. <laughs> well, it scared me to death until I realized I also wanted to live. And so <laughs> I discovered immediately the concept of paddling. My mother also taught me to act out the dream, not just think about it. She loved to read to my brother and me as small children especially fairy tales. And each time she finished one, she would then take us on walks into the school's woods, where we acted the story out and made it real. So, OK, right now we are at a low point in this show. Failures are not something we look at forward to, nor are they easy to take. In fact, they're often what seem to bring us to the breaking point. But eventually, we can get stronger. So these failures can also bring us to the growing point. And that is where I want us to be. This, by the way, isn't just a rehearsal for a high school play. Learning commitment, cooperation, confidence, problem solving here is also a dress rehearsal for your life. Once you hit the stage of life, you'll be ready. You'll remember the courage that it took to go out there on opening night and the exhilaration you felt afterward that made all that work pay off. When you face a job interview, you'll know how to find your inner strength. If your marriage hits a rough patch, how to cooperate for a common goal. And when you've lost your faith in yourself, Remember that we believed in you, and you lived up to it. Fear lives in the head. Courage lives in the heart. The job is to get from one to the other. OK, I'm done. Let's get back to work. We open in three weeks. We open in three weeks. Don't quit clapping. we got to get to work. <laughs>